So I'm here with Patrick Dermak, uh, the founder of AdBaker, and this is just amazing. I mean, you run so much Facebook traffic every day, and now you've also put together a Facebook course. You share your secrets on stage. Uh, this is awesome. Please, let's jump right into it. Um, five Facebook hacks. Go. Uh, okay, so in, in a minute, build a high quality seat audience. It's not about quantity, it's about quality. Focus on different customer segments, really experiment with the data because the Facebook algorithm is actually pretty simple. Once you give the algorithm the right data, it actually does magic. So focus on the data that you insert or that you inject into your system. Number two, um, rock creatives are really important. Focus on creating rockstar creatives. There are different hacks you can deploy. Uh, for example, just having an arrow at the end of a video pointing to the call to action in increase the CTR hugely. Three, increase the relevance score. It's a really big metric Facebook is looking at. If your relevance score is like at, at two or three, not really good, try to have a relevance score of at least an eight. Use a GIF overlay on your mobile landing pages. And increase the play rate by about 20%. Um, by about 20 and number five, monetize comments. There is a huge revenue opportunity just by posting links in the comment section or by having a call to action on your fan page uh, linking to the offer, to the product, or to like an advertorial. Uh, it's a missed opportunity, but it's super easy to do and just always increase, uh, increase the revenue that you're making. Um, right, so that, that, that's interesting. Can we elaborate a little bit more on that? So basically, let's say you put up a video ad. Yeah. Um, let's say it's for an e-commerce funnel. Yeah. So you have your ad copy, you have a link, yeah. uh, you have a video, and then obviously, if it's a good ad, um, there's a ton of hopefully positive comments. Yeah. But you're saying no matter if they're positive or negative, reply, include the link, yeah. and use that. Yeah, so for example, if, if a comment is super negative, then you should hide it. I would never use the delete button. I will, I, we are always using the hide button. That's just axing it out. Exactly, exactly. Right. Uh, apart from that, um, either respond the to the comments in a, so you monetize them softly by just demonstrating that you care about uh, your target audience. So if there's a question, you just answer it. Or what you can also do is just to really you, you have two or three variations of, of your answer text, and then you just link out to the offer underneath your, your comments. So that's a huge thing. And if you work with video, so if your campaign objective is uh, PPE, like page post engagement or video, very often people don't click on the ad, they check out your fan page. And if they land on your fan page to see are you legit or not, do you post content on a regular basis? So what we do under a timeline cover, we have an arrow pointing at um, the call to action button, like shop now, and it's written like 60% off. Really, so that's the button that you basically have below the cover image, exactly, but exactly. above everything else. E exactly, so there is an arrow pointing at it, people click on it, and then we don't link out to the offer, um, or at least not straight, especially if you're uh, sending traffic to VSLs, because if the ad account and the fan page go through a policy review, it's not really positive. Uh, what we do, we send uh, the user to like an independent review where we also focus on, on some of the drawbacks. It's not super salesy and then there are multiple call to actions on that uh, that forward the user to the VSL. If you look at both the client work that you do and other campaigns that you have done in the past, um, maybe you can share like one big success story uh, and one failure so we can learn from that. Uh, maybe, I can maybe tell you a failure from how we set up things in the beginning. So we, we started sure. out as affiliates and then we, we saw the um, tremendous potential, especially in German speaking countries, are offering performance marketing services to, to other companies. So the thing is, um, if you, let's say you want to sell, I don't know, a chair, a physical product. Right. First of all, you specify what you want to sell and then you don't change it. You just go with what you created. And you have to take a similar approach to um, crafting a service you really have to treat crafting a service as a product and then it's either a take it or leave it thing. What ma most agencies are doing wrong or most service providers, they always try to tailor the service to the leads that they're getting. Yeah. It's more of this is what I have to sell and those are the leads that I'm getting and then can I make a match or not? And that's a big mistake we did in the beginning where everything was too, there was too much flexibility. So what we did now, there are certain things that we're doing, there's a lot we're not doing, the price points are fixed, so that was a big takeaway that made everything faster. There are only a handful of clients we're working with, but 
we know who the, who the clients are, we know what they want, we have done that over and over again in the past, so uh, our operational costs are lower, the results that we can deliver are much better. So whenever you provide a service, that's the biggest takeaway from us, specify what you want to do, and then find people who buy it, but don't modify your service ongoingly. A uh, big success story, uh, that was probably a Legion campaign we did, uh, we did for a US tech company, where we lowered the lead cost from $240 to $8, by actually deploying, right. it's pretty good, by actually deploying the hacks that I shared today. So that was like in the last 12 months, like at least for the client, the, the biggest, biggest takeaway.